Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. When I finished up the Mediterranean Roof tutorial, uh, the second one, I uh, never it never occurred to me that I should do a tutorial on UV mapping the roof and creating a texture for it. So that's what I set about to do uh, in this in this tutorial. Now it's been some time since I did that tutorial so this roof here probably doesn't look exactly like the one that I did in my tutorials but I created it using the exact same method so really there's nothing different probably only its appearance. So if you've followed those tutorials and learned how to make a Mediterranean roof and you're wondering how to go about doing the UV mapping of it and texturing of it then I hope this tutorial will be of use to you. So first thing I want to do is come over here to UV and paint tool and I'm going to come here to a split screen and I'm going to come up here to planar projection. Now if you've uh, seen some of my other tutorials I've explained what the texture checker is and that's the texture that is automatically applied to this and the texture itself is shown here in this window and you see it's a uh, well it's a checkerboard but here as the texture is projected onto the object it doesn't look like a checkerboard it's um, it needs a little work so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and validate that uh, click on select edges draw a selection around all of these edges and I'm just going to shrink it down until the texture that's projected onto my roof here is roughly to scale and I just have to eyeball it but we can get it looking pretty close and I think maybe it could come up just a hair more or maybe down just a hair more okay I'd say that looks good I'm gonna come over here now we will have a slight problem um, as we go and apply our texture to this let me turn off the texture if you notice the spaces in between here these two spaces that's that corresponds to this area here on our object but the space isn't large enough and you'll see when we go to apply our texture to it it uh, it's not gonna look really good not that you would even notice it but I'll show you a quick little way on how to fix that up okay so we've got our UV map laid out well enough now I'm gonna go ahead and save it by clicking on this um, little camera snapshot here and I will call it uh, I'll call it test do I want to replace the one I've already got yes okay I'm gonna pause it here and bring that into Photoshop alright so here's my texture in Photoshop the first thing I want to do is I want to increase the size of this so I'm gonna come over here to image size and this is like the size of a postage stamp there's really not much you can do with it so I'm gonna change this to all oh, 200 dpi and which brings it up to 1200 and let's come back here I'm actually gonna change this to 3000 it's awfully large but I would rather make the texture large and then shrink it down rather than um, try to create the texture in a small size to begin with I'll get better details and better definition if I start with a larger size image I can always shrink it down alright first thing I want to do is create a new layer above that now I want to choose or create here a color for my Mediterranean roof and I think a little bit more orange okay um, because this is the area of my UV map that actually needs to have the texture on it I'm not going to do the whole thing so I'll just create a selection around it like that and because I created my foreground color to be this orangey color I'll hit alt I'm sorry I'll hit alt delete to fill that in with a solid color and control D to deselect that now 
I did create this to be much larger than the area that it really needs to be. And when we come back into hexagon and apply this to our uh, object, I'll show you why I made it a little larger than it has to be, because we still have just a little bit more modeling to do on the roof, at least the roof that I created for this tutorial. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to come up here and create a new layer. Actually, let me delete that. I'll just create a blank layer and control and click on this thumbnail here, which will create a selection around it. Now, I'm currently on this one, and I'm just going to fill that in with black, alt, delete, come up here to filter and noise, and I'm going to add noise. And these are the settings that I'm going to use. Uh, I don't want it to be too much, but roughly about 130. And the distribution is Gaussian and monochromatic. Now what I want to do is come up here to filter. I want to zoom in first. Filter, stylize, and emboss. And this will create kind of a sandstone type of texture to it. And I'm going to leave my angle at... 136. Change it however you like it. I'm going to leave the height at 1 and the amount at 61. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to come down and change the blending mode to overlay. I can hit Alt, uh, I mean, I can hit Control Delete to deselect that now. And this is what we get with uh, overlay. Well, it doesn't look really realistic, so I'm going to duplicate that layer. And what I want to do now is I want to come up here to Image and Adjustments, and I want to invert that. And now I'm going to change its blending mode to Hard Light. And now you see that it's gotten rid of the kind of the brightness and made it a little bit more desaturated. And I have some, well, it looks like good sand or stony texture uh, on this. And in my opinion, it looks pretty realistic. So I'm going to save this now as a JPEG. And I'll just call it test. OK. And the file size is a little large. I guess I could bring it down some. And click OK to that. And now let's come back over here into hexagon. Come over here, full screen. And I want to come over to texture here, texture image. And I'm going to choose that texture we just created. Open it up, and it will apply it to our object. Let me click off of that. And then when we zoom in, we can see that it looks pretty good. Except now when I said, when I uh, pointed out these areas earlier, right in here, right where this uh, the roof shows a little thickness to it you see that it does not cont it does not display the same texture as on the rest of uh, the areas of the roof and that's just some slight uh, modification we need to do with our UV map so let's come back over here to our split screen click on our roof and to make life really easy what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that edge up there, click on this t the top edge of these two, scroll down a little bit, hold down Shift and select that one also. Come down here, Shift, select that one, and we'll grab this last one, which should be right up here, and I'm going to hit Loop. And now all I'm going to do is zoom in so you can see I'm just going to stretch them up. And notice the difference that it will show here when I stretch it up. You see now it looks a lot better. That was probably a little bit too much. Okay, let me click off and now that's looking a lot better. No one would ever know, I mean, uh, um, unless the uh, camera view of your render is actually this close. But 
it certainly helps to be able to do some things, know how to do some things if you ever have questions or run into some problems. Okay, let's come back over here to a full screen view. Now we're not done with our roof yet because I want to add a little thickness to the front of it to make it appear as though these this is a big solid object, not just a um, piece of paper. So I'm going to select that end right there. I'm going to loop that. Come over here to Vertex Modeling. I'm going to click on Extrude. And I'm just going to pull straight down so that it's the same thickness as the rest of it. Click on Extrude again. And I'm just going to push it inwards, just like that. OK, let's come back over here to Split Screen. and enable this to be full screen and oops wait a minute let me come back now you will be able to see we made these new edges here and so that they are proper let's loop that okay this edge is represented here and that's probably a little bit for um, too long so I'll move this down just a tad select this one, loop it, and that should be this inner one underneath here. And we'll just, essentially all we're doing is taking um, the mesh of this and folding it inwards on itself. Uh, the mesh of the UV, not the actual object. I want to be clear about that. And there we are. And I'll just nudge this over. And do the same with this one. OK, now here's why I made the texture larger than it needed to be. Because we made these two extra edges, or faces on our uh, object here and underneath, that means the texture map is going to have to be larger to accommodate this this uh, extra uh, geometry. Now I could take this one and just stretch it down this way, but I was I'm fine doing it up back up this way. It, it doesn't matter one way or the other. So now if we enable our texture, we see um, that because I made it larger than it needed to be, I've still got extra room here to play with. I can even come down there, and it looks fine underneath it. OK, so let's come to a full screen view. And let's look at our object here. And that is a Mediterranean style roof. And if you look at the, the coloring on it, it actually looks like a, um, you know, it's made out of uh, some concrete material, that sort of thing. Now, coming back into Photoshop, if you want to uh, add a little bit more realism, to this, then come on over here to Bridge. And you'll probably immediately know what I'm going to be doing if you've seen my uh, Photoshop tutorials in, in the past. I am going to choose this uh, Rust. There it is, this Rust material right there. Double click that, import it into Photoshop. And I'm just going to hold down and drag it up over this on here. And then right down here into place, and stretch it to fit. And let's change the properties. Well, not, not that. All right, let's change it to soft light. Let's zoom in here. Uh, I like that. You got a lot of uh, character to this. Uh, as though it's definitely got some aged look to it. And actually what I want to do is drag this underneath all of my embossed layers. And I think that looks a little bit better. So let me save this. And I will import it back into Hexagon and apply it to our roof. All right, so here we are back in Hexagon. Let's zoom in here. and. Got a lot of detail here, and you can see the the discoloration 
that that uh, metal texture provided to our already pretty good looking roof material but it just adds a little bit more um, to the um, believability and uh, the realistic nature of the material so that's it for this I guess final tutorial now here for making a Mediterranean style roof. I hope this helps you out. So thanks for watching this tutorial here at Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.